Okay, so with your test out of the way, um, we're going to start Unit 2 for the semester. Unit 2 is going to be a short one. There won't be any quizzes. This will be just like three or four hours of lecture and then a unit test. And most of this should be a review for you. We're going to be talking about cutting speeds. So what we're going to start out with is if we know the parameters, figuring out what the surface cutting speed is. So our cutting speed is going to be in feet per minute. If we are looking at a round piece, so we're either looking at turning something on a lathe or we're looking at a round tool. like a mill or whatever. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find how far the surface of that piece or the surface of that tool is going to travel in a minute. Well one revolution of a circle is the circumference of a circle. That is going to be pi times diameter. One circumference of the circle. Now if it's turning at n RPMs it's going to turn n times a minute, so the circumference times the RPM is going to give us the distance that the surface of that travels in one minute. So that's if it's a round piece turning on a lathe or, like I said, a round tool. So d is either the diameter of the stock in the lathe or the diameter of the tool. That's all going to be in inches. The diameter is going to be in inches, so that would be in inches. And our cutting speed is in feet per minute. So we divide that by 12 to turn that into feet. Now you guys, I believe, do what? Diameter times RPM over like 3.84 or something like that? 8.2. That's just the 12 divided by pi. So let's say that we have a 1.5 inch stock in a lathe. turning at 210 RPM. Let's find the surface cutting speed of that material. So it's pi times what? One and a half times 210 over 12. So I'm just going to use 3.14 for pi times 1.5 for 1 1.5 times 210 divided by 12. So 82.425. And that is going to be feet per minute. So the surface cutting speed on that piece is 82.425 feet per minute. So I'm going to have you guys try one. Three quarter inch diameter mill. At 300 RPM. Find the surface cutting speed of that tool. I'll give you a minute to figure that one out. So what goes into our formula here first? Pi, pi so 3.14 times 0.75 or 3 fourths times 300 and of course over 12. So 3.14 times 0.75 times 300 divided by 12. 
Fifty-eight point eight seven five. Of course, that's feet per minute. Now, most of the time, you guys are looking at setting up a machine, trying to figure out how many RPMs it's supposed to be turning. So you would be looking at rearranging this formula for n. So if I wanted to have n by itself here, I have to get rid of pi d n to 12. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. So that gives me that 12 c equals pi d n. Then I'm going to divide both sides by pi d. So you get 12 C, 12 times the cutting speed over pi times diameter is equal to our number of RPMs. So let's say we are running a one and a quarter inch carbide mill on and we'll go on aluminum Come on. so we're running a one and a quarter inch carbide mill on aluminum we want to know how many RPMs we can run it at so we need to look up and figure out what is the surface cutting speed for aluminum while milling with a carbide tool. The table I have gives the range of that speed between 1,000 and 1,800 feet per minute. Now a lot of that depends on your, your uh, coolant. If you have a pressurized coolant, you can run faster, you can run up to the 1800. Otherwise, what happens if you don't have a pressurized coolant? Yeah, it gums up your tool, is what it does. So we're gonna run on the lower end of that. We're gonna try to stick to the thousand feet per minute. So to find my number of RPM, the 12 is a constant, what goes in for C? C is the cutting speed. That's going to be our thousand feet per minute over pi times 1.25, one and a quarter. Right? Now, when we put this in the calculator, we've got to be careful. We do 12 times 1,000. Then we got to divide it by. We got to put the bottom of this in parentheses. 3.14 times 1 and a quarter, 1.25. And then we got to close the parentheses. If we don't put that bottom in parentheses, it will not calculate right. <clears throat> so we get 3,057 RPM. Three thousand RPM seems a little bit fast for the equipment you guys got in the shop. <clears throat> A thousand feet per minute for a cutting speed on aluminum is still a little bit fast unless you operate the system. <clears throat> have you guys talked about different cutting speeds for materials yet? Do you guys have any charts that you guys go off of for just the machinery handbook? General numbers. Just general? What have they given you for aluminum and what your surface cutting speed should be? Three hundred, really running it really well. Okay. Yep. He's you're just taking a thin cut. <clears throat> Aluminum running at that slow of a speed, 
It avoids gumming it up, so you don't have to worry about having coolant. Um, the thing with aluminum running that slow is you run the risk of gouging, literally ripping out chunks of the aluminum and not getting a good surface finish. Okay. So we're going to have you do this. So let's just look at alloy steel. We're going to deal with a two inch diameter piece in a lathe. And we're going to have you running just a high speed steel tool. So we're going to have you running it at 80 feet per minute is your cutting speed. I want you to find calculate the RPMs needed for that. So remember, n equals 12 times c over pi b. So find the RPM that would work for that. So we have 12 times 12 so goes in for C 80 over 3.14 times 2 So 12 times 80 divided by, if you remember, put in parentheses 3.14 times 2. <clears throat> Getting basically 150 RPM, 152.9 RPM. I'm guessing, as usual, he's taught you to round down on your RPM. Okay. What if you're running metric? What if you have a piece that is turning 250 RPM, has a 32 millimeter diameter? What's its surface cutting speed? <clears throat> Now, of course, we're finding our surface cutting speed here is going to be in meters per minute. Your formula here is going to be that surface cutting speed is still your distance traveled. So it's pi times diameter. It's just now your diameter is in millimeters instead of in inches times your RPM. That's your number, your distance around one revolution times your number of revolution. But now we're converting, before we were dividing by 12 because we we're converting from inches into feet. Now we are converting from millimeters into meters. So what's going to go on bottom? To convert from millimeters to meters, we divide by 1,000. So for this scenario here, 250 RPMs on a 32 millimeter piece. That's pi times 32 times 250 over 1,000. So 3.14 times 32 times 250 divided by 1,000. 25.12 meters per minute is your surface cutting speed. Now you ask, is that reasonable? Well, you're used to having it in feet per minute. Um, your conversion, it's about, it's 
3.28 feet per meter is the approximate conversion. So if you take 25.12 times 3.28, that's giving you about a little over 80 feet per, per minute. So that's a reasonable cutting speed. Do you guys do anything in metric units? No? Um, a couple of major companies, even in this area that do international trade, have switched over to doing pretty much everything metric. Um, IBM Corporation, which I know isn't in this area, but they do everything, domestic or foreign manufacturing, in metric units. And they figured it saved them nearly $10 million the first year they did it because they didn't have to go through all of the work of engineering everything in both units. They didn't have to dual label every print. And then because of the round off error when you're converting units from metric to standard or standard to metric, they had less scrap. They had less uh, interference error with their parts working together. 3M over here, uh, they haven't completely made the switch, but they have announced that they are going to make every effort to totally make the switch over to metric. They have no more standard units in their manufacturing processes either. So it's something, if you're going to deal with a company that does any sort of international trade or does any part of their um, manufacturing process overseas, you're going to be seeing more and more of them going to strictly metric units. Now, just like with our standard units, this formula here um, gives us the cutting speed, but it would make more sense if I gave you the cutting speed to find the RPM. So if I rearrange that for N, I would be multiplying by 1,000 and then dividing by pi D. So my number of RPMs is going to equal 1,000 times C over pi times D. So let's say that we have a piece where the allowable surface cutting speed is 40 meters per minute and the diameter is 45 millimeters. This is going to be 1,000 times 40 over pi times 45. Now again, when we punch this in the calculator, this bottom has to go in parentheses. So 1,000 times 40 divided by parentheses 3.14 times 45. Close those parentheses. 283.09. So you'd probably be running about 280 RPM. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to talk about here is cutting time. This works either with a lathe or a mill. We're going to start out with a mill just because it's a little bit simpler. So let's say we're working with a mill and the mill is capable of having a feed rate Four thousandths of an inch per RPM per revolution. I forgot per RPM. Sorry. Four thousandths of an inch per revolution. Now I realize for you guys, what you normally do is you have a, a chart that says how much you can advance per cutting surface. Then you look at whether it's a the tool has two cutting surfaces or three cutting surfaces or whatever, and you multiply that out. The feed rate I'm giving you here. We're assuming we've already taken that into consideration. That we've already adjusted for the number of cutting surfaces on the tool. Does that make sense? So that is the feed for the tool, not per, per cutting surface. So now if we have this is running at 1, well, let's say we're running at 800 RPM. 
And we need to make a four inch cut. How long is that gonna take? Well, the time to make a cut, time in minutes, is equal to the length of that cut in inches divided by F, which is the feed rate of the tool, that's gonna be in inches per revolution, and N, which is our RPM. So we have a four inch cut, that's our L, four inches. F is 0 0.004 inches per revolution times N is 800 RPMs. So what the bottom here is giving us, this is inches per revolution and this is revolutions per minute. This is giving us inches per minute. So then we're just taking our, our length of cut divided by our inches per minute to get how many minutes it takes to make the cut. So let's divide that out. Again, we've got to use our parentheses. So 4 divided by parentheses 0 0.004 times 800. N? N is RPM. Why N? N is just standard for RPM. N is number of RPM. So you get 1.5 minutes is the time it takes to make that cut. What's that? This is kind of confusing because we do it like a different way. You hear what? What formula do you guys use in the shop? Well, we never really. Chipper two times number of teeth. Yeah. RPM. So what you're getting is your your chips per your chip yeah your chip rate per tooth times number of teeth. That is just that's where this number comes from. I'm just combining those all into one and giving you that as one number. So that's exactly what we're doing right here is just. F includes that whole thing and then times RPM. You're looking for uh, finding the RPM. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all you're doing for your RPM is you're combining. Uh, I get up here to the 12 divided by pi is 3.82. You're just taking the pi out of it, is all. Let's take a look at, let's say we give you a piece we're going to allow the, the material combined with our tool combination, we have 200 feet per minute is going to be our cutting speed. This is on a 3 quarter inch mill. And we need to make a, well, let's say we're going to make a 10 inch cut for the feed rate well let's do it um, let's say we've got what is it, a three flute mill a three tooth mill What's the standard uh, chip load for a for a mill? For a, a mill? Yeah. Point zero zero one, ten thousand. I was gonna say one, usually one or two thousands. So that's gonna be your chip load. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is find the feed rate here. The feed rate is gonna be three teeth times that. So that's point zero zero three inches per revolution is what your feed rate is. So that's the step that you guys are taking before what I've given you here is figuring that out. So then that means first thing we have to do is we have to find your RPM. RPM N is going to equal 12 times your cutting speed over Pi times D. Or 3.82 times your cutting speed over diameter. 
So what goes in for cutting speed here? C is cutting speed, surface cutting speed. So for this problem, that's the 200 feet per minute. Over our diameter was three quarter inch. We'll put it as 0.75. So 3.82 times 200 divided by 0.75. It's 1,018.67 RPM. Now you guys would probably round that off to 1,000 RPM. No. No, you'd leave it? 1,020 or 1,019? We'll go 1,019. So if we round that to 1,018 RPM, we need to know our cutting time. So our time, remember, was length of cut divided by feed times RPM. So the length of cut here is a 10-inch cut. Our feed that we found is 0 0.03 times our RPM of 1,019. So this is 10 divided by, we've got to put this in parentheses, 0 0.003 times 1,019. We get 3.27 minutes is your time to cut. Now if you guys have formulas from the shop that are slightly different from these, feel free to use them. You're going to come up with pretty much the same answer. The only thing that you will have to use is the, the surface cutting speed that they give you in the packet. So I'm going to give you a packet here. And in the packet, it is going to be page 242, 1 through 57 the odds. Um, you also should have your, your tests and your quiz back to do corrections on. So I'm going to give you guys the last 18, 19 minutes here to get started on this. I'll get the packets out to you right now.